Welcome to AP Laser Workshop. I'm Aaron McClung with uh, Alicia Vanderpool. Whether you're tuning in for the first time uh, or whether you're tuning in from your own workshop or just exploring the world of AP Laser Machines and thinking about joining our family, we welcome and thank you for joining us today. Uh, we have a very interesting subject today. It's a very good one. Uh, let's start reflecting on today's uh, topic, which is mirrored acrylic engraving cutting and photo photo engraving I'm here to acrylic. Photo engraving, yeah. I'm gonna try and tackle it the best I can. I know I'm not the best out there quite yet with photos, but uh, I've it's got some good amazing. tips and tricks that'll get you there for sure. I will say, diving into this, photos are one of the hardest things to master on your laser. It's probably the last thing that you'll ever master. Um, it takes a lot of time, a lot of practice, um, and a few, you know, angry fits leaving the studio. <laughs> but eventually you'll get somewhere that, where you're happy and you'll, you know, figure things out. Um, so starting off, um, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, pre-editing in uh, Photoshop here. This is something that you can also do entirely in Lightburn, you know, play with your different settings in there. Um, but I'm just going to show you just real quick, simple things you can do in Photoshop. Um, and then I'm going to work... Um, in the future in our future workshops uh, learning Corel as well and kind of going through the steps on there I know a lot of you out there have Corel instead of Photoshop so I'm trying to balance both but bear with me here we're just gonna stick with Photoshop to start here <laughs> um, so I've got this really nice you know this beautiful couple here it's already a really nice photo to start out with um, that is why you could just bring that into Lightbird and do some edits with it um, but I'm gonna do a little bit here so I've got this image here and the first thing that I'm gonna want to do I'm going to go up to select here and I'm going to do subject. So I'm just going to isolate the subject from the background. I don't want any of the background in my image. I just want the, um, the focus on these two right here. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to copy that and paste it onto a new layer. And then I can go ahead and get rid of that bottom layer. You can delete it or just hide it. Doesn't really matter either way. If you want it there, just, you know, for security, if you need to go back for any reason, you have it there. Um, but so these are these guys are nice and isolated here and then I'm gonna go up to my image tab I'm gonna change this to black and white Let's see image let's click on my layer first that helps image adjustments there it is and then black and white and I'm just going to change that to black and white um, there's different you know technically if I just imported that in with color into Lightbird it would change it to the black and white for me but I like to kind of see where things are going to go from the get-go. So we kind of have that nice black and white there. And then the last thing I'm going to do is go up to Filter, Sharpen, and Unsharp Mask. And as you can see, that does quite a bit there. You know, it makes it kind of drastically different. If I turn that preview off, you can see that's the original photo, which looks super blurry going back to it now. <laughs> but then I've got that different um, sliders on here and turn that preview back on and all it's doing is kind of sharpening that image bringing out the finer details that um, your laser is going to really kind of um, it's going to work really well with your laser to have those on there really defined otherwise the dots get kind of muddy and lost and you get kind of a blown out image if you're just using that flat um, and again you can play with these different sliders there's like the amount down here you know you can see how that changes things there and just play with it until you find something you like I think that looks pretty good. You can play with the radius. The radius gets really crazy really fast. <laughs> and see, I'm at seven right here. If I go up, look how crazy that looks. Like that changes things drastically. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna kind of, you want it on the lower end. And again, it's just playing with those sliders. I don't ever really touch threshold, just the top two here. Once you have something you like, go ahead, hit okay. You can kind of zoom out and see everything here. I like how that's looking, so I'm going to go to File, you can export, um, you can just quick export as a PNG, but I like to export as just so I keep that resolution. If you do the quick export, it kind of reduces things a little bit. Um, this way you can kind of control, you know, your size and everything in there and get that exported out. Um, so I've already got this ready to go, so I'm just going to exit out of there and pull my light burn and we have it here and all I did to get that in there 
was file and import and then I found my image and then here it is just in there. And you can see where I exported that as a PNG. Um, there's no background here, which is really, really nice. I didn't want any white background, any black background, nothing. Just these two uh, lovely people right here. Um, you and know, you know, absolutely. Of course, if you wanted to, you could leave the vinyl siding in the background of the image. If, you if you want the vinyl could. siding. Yes, image. yeah. I <laughs> just wanted something really nice and simple. I, I just wanted to speak in defense of vinyl yeah. siding. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted something really, you know, simple and easy. Um, cause what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a welcome sign for a wedding. So this is just part of the, the design here. Um, I bought this really nice frame off of Amazon. Uh, it's like this really rustic kind of nice little thing. I liked how that looked. So I just going to size everything to fit within this frame here. Um, and so I believe it is 11 by 14. So I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to go over to my tools over here. I'm going to make a little oval. I'm going to turn that lock off so I can make things where I want it. And the width was 11 and the height was 14. Hit enter and then we can lock it back up so it stays in proportion there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything on my screen here. Go back to my selection tool. And we're going to target that so everything's in the middle there. You can see this isn't really working out for me. I need to scale things down a little bit or it's going to look a little awkward in that. <laughs> You're not going to get much at the mirror either. So we're going to make this a little smaller just so they're nice and even in here. And this is also why I got rid of that background. There's not going to be any edges in there. It's just the two of them. I don't have to worry about making the background fit within that. Oval. Oh, so we can actually see the mirror part of the mirror. Yes. Yep. <laughs> we want to play so you can actually tell that was a mirror, not just a regular piece of acrylic. Uh, make it a little more fun, you know. Um, but you just, you know, size it to where you want it. Um, I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave that there. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and make another copy of this oval since I'm going to be cutting that out. And then select the next oval. Hit your little target button up here. And then if we select that top oval that we just made and our image at the same time, we, you can see both of those are selected there. If you right click on there and apply the mask to the image, you can see where that flattens that out to that shape. Um, now to make it, you know, if this is where you want it, you can slide things out and adjust things if you want to, you know, kind of move things around. I liked where it was right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead, right click again, and I'm gonna flatten that image mask. So now everything is within that oval there. So, you know, Now, now if you're watching and thinking, I'm trying to keep up, slow down, you can come back and watch this video later and slow it down and pause it to watch those steps again. So absolutely. don't feel overwhelmed while you're watching yes, this. Yes, absolutely. Please. I will say, too, if you're part of the uh, AP Laser family already, you can go to uh, APLU, um, put, log into your account there. And these files, um, that image file, I also have a completed file that you can reference um, and work off of. And just kind of go through alongside this video um, to kind of make your own, you know, do little tests of your own. Obviously, you know, these people aren't probably going to mean much to you. They're just a nice little stock image, <laughs> a stock couple there. So you can put your own images there as well um, and kind of follow the steps. Um, but it's there for practice. <laughs> so I got this kind of, you know, I could just run that as a mirror and it'd look great. But I want to customize it to be a welcome sign for the wedding. It's not just, you know, uh, just the two of them staring back at you Life. coldly. <laughs> So if I go to my text tool over here, I'm going to go and I'm just going to say welcome and I'm going to hit enter to our wedding. Love sign. If I know how to spell things, sometimes I don't. Depends on how much coffee I've had. <laughs> so I have that text there. Obviously, this kind of font is pretty boring. So you can go go through and find one that I like. I really love this one. It's called Fancy Delight. I just got it from defont.com. So it's something you can download as well. I believe it should be within the files um, on APLU as well. So you can have and play with that there. Um, what I really like about Lightburn is you have all the freedom with your text to kind of customize things. Um, you can customize, you know, your spacing horizontally and vertically. I'm going to make that a little tighter so they're a little bit closer together. I'm going to bring that and make it a little bit bigger there. 
and kind of center it in there where I like it. So that looks, I like the way that looks. I think that's pretty nice. I know that we had a question um, in one of our user groups as well, um, asking how to curve things to a circular shape. Um, if you're using Lightburn, there's this nice little curve tool right here. It shows up as a blue dot. If you click on that guy and turn it here, you can curve that to your oval shape. Yeah, sorry, to, to expound on what she's talking about, we actually had a question submitted mm -hmm. um, in one of our user groups, in which if you're not already a member, please join our, if you're a family member, please join our AP Laser user group. And if you're looking at becoming a family member and you're not already, please join our AP Laser before you buy. Um, but Jennifer Law asked, uh, just after some advice here, if I may, using Lightburn, how would I go about writing text in a semicircle? So that's what she's demonstrating here, is answering this question. Here. So you just write it out as the straight line and then you can go in and curve it to however you like it later. Um, I don't really like the way the curves look on this one though, so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of take it back to the way it was. Um, now something that I do need to change is with the mirrored acrylic, if you cut to the machine, you can kind of see how that's going there. But that is, we are engraving on the back of our material. So everything needs to be flipped. You need to mirror when you're engraving on mirror. <laughs> um, I guess it's pretty easy to remember when you put it that way. So all I'm gonna do, I could flip this whole thing. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter which direction they're facing, they're gonna look all right. They don't have any words on their clothing or anything that's gonna look weird if I flip it. But I'm just going to go ahead and flip that text, and that's just this little guy up here. You can just go ahead and mirror selection horizontally, bam, you're ready to go. Um, something else I do need to change is I'm going to have to change that from line. Well, actually, let's change it to a different color because we still want that to be a line. So now we have that engraving. That's set to fill, which means it's going to engrave. The photo is set as an image, which will engrave as well, and we can work on getting those settings set. Um, but once we're ready there, I think that looks good. We have the outline that's going to cut, we have the photo that's going to engrave, and we have that text that's going to, to engrave. So now we can go over to our settings here. Um, on the image, I have that set for a speed of 15 and the power set to 16. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Looks great. Um, for the text, I did up it a little bit. 15 uh, and 16 would work for this as well. I just upped it a little bit to make it a little bit more pronounced on there. I did a speed of 15 and a power of 20. And again, this is on our 4836 machine. It's gonna vary based on your model. This is a 100 watt machine, so it works really well with that. You might just need to up the speed and power if you're using one of the lower wattage models. But these work really well. I'd say it's obviously it's gonna work on the 4836. That's what I've been using. It's probably gonna work just as uh, well on the 4024. Anything lower than that, you're just gonna wanna play with a little bit. Um, you know, run your little test squares. I ran quite a bit of them. It's just, you know, just making little things. I will say when you're running your tests, make sure that you are keeping your characters to size. So just snip out a little square of them. Don't shrink it down or you're not gonna know exactly how it's gonna turn out in the end. Um, when I do little tests, all I do is I'll take the square tool, kind of grab that guy, turn him into a little box here, and say I want to see how his face is going to turn out. I'm going to do what I did before and apply that mask to the image. And then I'd get rid of everything else and just run that little square. That way it's still to size with what it's going to be in the end. And you can see exactly how those details are going to turn out. If you scale it down to run a test, things are going to look different than they will in your final product. And you may be, you know, really happy to see that they turned out better or they could maybe turn out worse. So. Um, one other thing that I want to go over quickly is if I go into my image here, uh, right click that, we can go to adjust image really quick. And I'm running these as a negative image. Uh, make sure you have that clicked. You can also run it as a regular image and put some black paint behind it and it will look really good. Um, the way I did it, I ran it as a negative and then I put a little bit of white paint behind it to highlight it there. You can kind of see how that turned out. Um, and it just kind of I think it makes it pop a little bit better and it's not too intrusive. I did a couple tests with the black and it just, it looked, it was a little much. <laughs> but you know, it depends on your engraving and again, that's where you'd run your tests and figure out what works for you. So I have that set to negative. 
you can invert your display over here to kind of see the final result and how it's going to turn out um, after it's engraved and painted. And I, it might be a little controversial. I'm a huge, 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 huge fan of halftone settings. Um, you know, used improperly, it can look really weird, but if used properly, it looks really, really nice. Um, so I have that set to halftone. I just have it at 300 DPI. It's not too crazy. It's a nice little middle ground. Um, it'll work with your two inch and your one and a half inch. We're using a one and a half inch on the engraving we're running right now just because it gets a little more detail in there. Um, and that's something you can talk with your sales rep about, about adding that lens kit on to your package. Um, I really recommend it. There's a lot that the one and a half inch can do for photos and the three and the four inch works really, really well for kind of rigid and curved surfaces as well. Yes, it's just, it's good to have as many tools uh, available as you can. Uh, of course, it comes standard with two inch lens and already works, but if you can include stuff like light burn and our lens kit and other features uh, like our, you know, you can get both of our rotary tools, whether you get the cradle rotary and or the and the truck rotary, just anytime you can add additional tools to your arsenal, it just expands your options and your limitless possibilities we have with the APVs. That's, that's definitely, you know, I switch them out often, so getting to the, the possibilities are endless, that's really going to be a friend to use having all those different lenses with you so you can trade them out and you know see what works for you for different projects um, so since I already had a really nice photo processed in Photoshop there's not a lot else I need to do with the settings down here um, you can play with the cells per inch the half tone angle different things like that um, I just have it set for 200 cells per inch and a half tone angle of 22.5 and when I ran the one that is running in the machine right now, I update, I enhanced the radius to 10 and the enhance amount to 100. So it just brings out, it kind of crispens things a tiny bit more. Um, I think it would look fine without it as well, but I just thought it brought kind of another little depth to it. So once you're happy with how things look, you can hit OK. And again, this is where you could run your tests and do different settings and figure out what you like before you're running this huge, huge piece. But I'm happy with how things look. My settings are there and all I need to do is hit send and you're good to go. You know, you have it running and you're off to the races. The mirrored acrylic works really, really well for portraits. You know, you got these really nice subtle designs on there. Um, when you do the white, fill behind it it creates this nice little ghosting look to it and you can use it for other things like signs earrings I know a lot of people make uh, bar signs and welcome signs and different things like that with them there's a lot that you can do with this material that turns out super super cool yes the mirror the mirrored acrylic we, we, were, we were talking a little bit about this before the uh, before our, our show here uh, before our workshop that the, the mirrored acrylic uh, has some benefits over glass acrylic. Now, glass acrylic is what it is. Or, I'm sorry, gla mirror glass, glass mirror. Yep. <laughs> mirror glass is what it is. It's it's very similar to how the mirrored acrylic is made, as in they put a reflective coating on the back of glass. Mm -hmm. uh, um, a true mirror, uh, uh, as you buy them in stores and stuff, it's go or glass mirrors, are going to be just clear glass with a reflective backing. There's usually some type of lacquer or application, epoxy application. Mm -hmm. But sometimes when you're engraving through the back of that, you get some unexpected results. And sometimes it could be as simple as, which you still have to monitor, some of these things you still have to monitor with the acrylic. You might get a buildup on the cone, which can cause um, an obstruction in the hole where the laser's coming through. So you have to be careful to make sure that you're monitoring that when you're doing, especially when you're doing the, the glass mirror, that it's not building up and then stopping your laser from going through, because then you'll have a band in your image where it stops it. There was an, and there's also, sometimes in the mirrors, there's inconsistencies that will cause the laser to react different when you're doing the glass. Um, there was one time, and it's only happened to me once, but I was actually doing a, a large mirror, a very large, I think it was like a four foot by three foot mirror that I was engraving through the back of it and it was doing a very large engraving because we can do that with our machines. Okay? Oh, yes, we have we oh, yes, endless we can. possibilities. We have, you know, 48 by 36 gives you, you know, three foot by four foot workspace. Plus you can stitch it amongst other things because of how the open cabinet system is. Mm -hmm. But I was doing this really big mirror 
And then for some reason, I don't know if they did it for stability or what, but it was almost like a multi-layer application on the backing. And there was like a thin aluminum type strip going through the mirror backing, which made it unusable with the laser because the laser just wasn't going through that. So I haven't run into that with the mirrored acrylic, um, especially the mirrored acrylic we have available on our web store. Um, I believe the links will be in the description below. Yes, for we do have some links in the description at. on how to get the web store, and there are uh, promo codes. Yeah, available. I think we hit, we're running a ten percent off coupon on that right now, so it's definitely worth checking out with that coupon. Um, there's a lot you can do, like we said before, and it is easier, much easier to do tests and little things like that on than it is a regular mirror, and it's usually a lot cheaper too. Yes, the um, sorry, the, oh, where'd it go? The discount code was, was displayed there on the screen. Um, but I'm also going to paste it here in the chat just so we can reference it. Uh, if you're, if you're watching this and you didn't want to, don't want to rewind it every time. Um, so yes, use that promo code in our web store and get discount on our acrylic, on our mirrored acrylic. Um, and check out a lot of our other, um, all our other products and, and lines and stuff on there, which is constantly changing, constantly evolving. Mm -hmm. If you run into a product where it shows, like on a general screen, it shows out of stock, go ahead and click on that and make sure there's not different sizes available that are in stock that might suit your needs. And of course, if as always, if you're like, I really want this, but it's not in stock, you can always call our um, AP Laser uh, customer support or 24-7 tech support line, and they can help you see, check if it's stock availability on some of those items as well. Or let you know what's coming in, and uh, yeah, and just help you with all of our web store stuff. Yeah, well, that's going to be running for a minute. Or we have any other questions prepared that we wanted to go over? Actually, we do have some questions here. We can go kind of right into some of our uh, tech questions mm -hmm. while we let, while we think about the mirrored acrylic project you just did. Uh, I do have some some a few questions that kind of bounce around a little bit, but I think there's some really good questions I'd like to answer today. And Scott Erskine asks, when your machine is not in use, do you keep the lid up or put it down? Hmm. Well, I, um, I personally leave my lid down, except when I leave it up. Um, <laughs> so it's really a matter of everybody's going to have kind of their shop preference, their shop procedure. Uh, probably nobody as meticulous as Frank from Pops Custom Signs. Um, I'm sure he'll tell you about some of his maintenance hey, programs and it's pops custom science and laser creations yes. now sorry he's got pops a lot more science and laser creation sorry <laughs> yes he is well diversified uh you, you utilizing the laser in many different ways that uh endless possibilities there but anyways to talk about i i prefer to keep my lid down and what i really prefer to do is when i'm done running my laser for the day is i like to remove everything from the from the laser bed everything from the workspace clean everything off, dust everything down if, if I've gotten stuff, every, uh, dust all over the place. If I did some messy jobs like big acrylic, I go ahead and do a quick cleaning on my mirrors using the uh, approved alcohol or proof solution and follow our instructions on our, uh, in our AP Laser user guide. Um, and just clean those off just to make sure that I don't have anything setting and building up. But then I do like to close the lid just because it helps keep dust out of the machine in general. Um, and also keeps people from poking around in there when they shouldn't be. If somebody wanders in and they shouldn't be around. So it's really a preference thing, but I, I would recommend always keeping the lid down uh, for, for many different reasons, whether it be safety, cleanliness, preservation, whatever, uh, whatever reason you want to use, it's a good one just to keep it down. Um, Chip Calverly asks, he says, uh, Hello all, I have a 4024-100 watt. I'm trying to figure out how to clear the memory so that new jobs I download go, go in faster. When I first go, got the machine, I was saving designs to the machine memory and the, then read somewhere that they don't recommend doing that because it will slow down the amount of time it takes to download a new design. Hmm. Any help is greatly appreciated. What Chip is talking about is all of the controllers, whether it be RD Works or Laser Cut, uh, our old, which is the older style, have a stored memory where you can save the file by a name and save it in your controller. So it's there. You can bring up the file list. You can select that file and run it. Now, the statement 
not recommended to do that is if you're doing a different job every time, we don't recommend saving by a different name and then saving it to the controller. And then because the memory does, it it does have a limit to it. So if you fill it up, it will cause you problems in the long run. And usually it catches you when you least least expect it. And I know as with any other issue, I've run into that without even knowing that that I didn't even know you could delete your files. And most people don't. So I'm actually going to show everybody on my screen how to recall those files to see what's in there and also delete them. I'm going to show you both the light burn and RD works. Um, if you can cut to my screen, uh, if it cuts to the right screen, hold on. Well, while he's getting that figured out, um, I just wanted to go over, I answered it in the chat, but I just wanted to pull up a, uh, again as well. There's a couple questions in here. Um, Ron Baker asked uh, if we engrave all the acrylics the same depth. I have pretty much the same settings for the mirrored acrylic for the clear, you know, cast acrylic. Extruded's a little different just because it's so finicky when you engrave it. Right. But it's pretty universal, and you can kind of keep with your settings and kind of play with them a little bit. I usually do a tiny bit uh, more power on the cast acrylic than I would with the mirrored acrylic. But then, you know, again, it's just playing and figuring things out. I Um, think I've got my screen fixed. All right, let's hop back to it. So I'm going to show you here on, well, I'm going to go to Lightburn real quick because that's my favorite. Um, If you don't have Lightburn, and it's well worth the investment, look into it um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come over here to file list if file list isn't available you'll come up here to window and then select file list right here on this menu and once you select file list you click refresh oh i have to be on the correct machine sorry hit refresh and then it's going to bring up all the files that you have in your machine by name. And then right here, if you look at where my mouse is, you can click delete all files. And that will clear everything out of your memory. Now, maybe there's a couple files I need to do that I do all the time because I have my logo on there and I do these cups. And every, every Tumblr I do on the bottom of my Tumblr, I put my logo so I'm gonna make sure I keep that one. So I'm gonna just do be selective and just select some of the files and then click delete right here. And then that will remove the files from your memory. If you don't have Lightburn yet, uh, I recommend getting it, but we can also use RD Works. So here on RD Works, I have the same machine hooked up. I'm going to go to the dock tab over here on the right side window. And with that dot tab open, I'm going to click read. And that's going to bring up all the files I, I have in here. And then it's the same way. It's going to let me delete all, or I can select individual files and delete from the memory that way. Either way, that's going to help you, uh, that's going to help you keep things under, keep your memory under control. Because if it fills up, it doesn't send you an alarm. Well, it, it just messes up. And that's the alarm. So <laughs> I know I've gotten a lot. It gets super, super slow to send things over. Right. And, you know, things uh, ultimately it just pops up and says, nope, can't send it. Like, for, or, you know, it won't send, won't send. And I'm like, what's going on? So <laughs> and that could also interfere with your laser engraving. I've seen that happen wow. a couple times either just because it's messing with the memory and how it can operate. So and, you know, going back, I, maybe maybe I'll blame my past bad engravings on that then. <laughs> I hope that answers your question, Chip. Alfred Pruden asks, how many years can an 1812 AB laser last? I am very careful not to move it around. Uh, the highest max I use is 40. Okay, so the AP lasers, and I, I'll add this. Uh, James Lingenfelter answers, all the parts are replaceable, so it, so it should last you as long as you need it to. That is partially true, but it is mostly true. So... The AP laser is designed, all AP laser formats are designed to be very serviceable by the user to where you shouldn't need a professional electrician or technician to come help you assist these. If a component goes bad after a while, we have all the parts on hand and available to replace. On some machines, such as the 1812, which is designed to be portable, so don't be afraid to make it portable, just 
handle it carefully because it does have a glass tube. The, the glass tubes do have a lifespan depending on how you use them. But those are also available for replacement. And the 1812s are a little bit lower cost on the laser tube because they're smaller and they are made to be replaced more frequently because they're just how they're used. Mm -hmm. But to, to give you any confidence, Alfred, I, I've, I've been with, the, with AP Laser a little over 10 years and uh, about 10 and a half, 11 years. And I have customers that were customers for three or four years before I got, before I came here. And they're still using their original AP laser with their mm -hmm. original laser tube. And they maybe have replaced a couple parts and they're just really made to withstand the, to withstand time. Um, which kind of leads right into the next question, similar. I have a 2816 laser. I'll be moving from my present location to 150 miles away. Oh, wow. What is the safest and best way to transport it so I don't do any damage? Thanks in advance for the help. Uh, that's from Dan Goff. And Dan, I, I have to tell you that it all depends on what are your, what uh, capabilities do you have to move it, okay? Mm -hmm. um, we move machines from our show floor onto a loading dock onto a truck mm -hmm. and just rolled it out of the truck put some moving blankets around it, some foam padding to kind of absorb some bounces and stuff, and then strapped it into the back of an 18 wheeler or a moving truck, drove it down to Atlanta, drove it down to um, Tennessee, drove it down to Texas, drove it down to Alabama, drove it down to Florida, rolled it off the machine, put water back in the, in the reservoir into, for the coolant, and then run the machine and no problem. So if you have the ability just to roll it around, that's really the best way to do it. I just always recommend taking the coolant or water out of the coolant system. Um, and if you need any help with that, contact our tech support team and they will walk you through it mm -hmm. um, just to keep any that water weight from bouncing and, and cracking the tube. But not all of us have the ability of the capabilities or the luxury of having overhead doors and loading docks. So sometimes you have to move it up and down stairs or through doorways. So the best thing is again, drain, drain the, um, drain the coolant, mm -hmm. uh, secure the laser head to keep it from moving around using zip ties. Um, and our tech support team can walk you through that. Some contact our tech support team for their guidance on that. And then of course, make sure you have help. Just move the components individually because gonna... it's easier to take a little bit more time and break it down if you have to than it is to force an issue. I was gonna say, always make sure you have a friend, two, or maybe even three. Right. It depends yes. on the size of your machine exactly. and how much you can carry. I know if I was moving that, it would take at least three other people to help me. <laughs> and then uh, from a shop, uh, the Chop Woodworks, a shop asks, for those who have the Purex filter, do you clean the bag filter or replace it? Are they washable? Thank you. It's a great question and I, don't recommend washing or attempting to clean any of the filter media that comes in our Purex or Bofa uh, filtration systems. There's a couple of reasons why. They are uh, meticulously engineered and to certain specs. And if you wash the bag filter, it's, it's going to stop doing what it does. Mm. If you try to clean it, you might just make a mess or more importantly, you might compromise your safety because it might be holding contaminants. They're not healthy for you to be handling um, or ingesting by respirate, by breathing it in and stuff like that. So I really recommend just contacting the, our, your AP, our AP Laser Tech Support Team and they can get you set up uh, with a replacement media, what, whichever media needs to be replaced because it's multiple layers. If it's a bag filter or the charcoal filter, whichever layer it is, and they can get you set up with the replacements for that. But definitely don't try to self-service. They're not made to be self-service uh, as in cleaning the filters. They are meant to be self-service and replacing the filters. I would say that is a good point. You never really think about what exactly your filtration is picking up in right. there. You know, <laughs> even just the loose wood particles, getting that into your lungs, that's not good. So definitely, definitely reach out for help on that. Yeah, yes. And then uh, those are just some of the tech questions which focus a little bit on moving and some other general stuff. I really want to get some general questions that customers are asking that are possibly looking at buying a laser. Um, and also some members are already part of our AP Laser family. Uh, but Nick Verzino, uh, Verzino 
if I said it incorrectly, I apologize, Nick. Uh, he said he was researching and noticed that diode lasers don't, or diode laser doesn't cut some acrylics. Are there limitations to what diode laser can cut compared to CO2? Thanks. So it sounds like he's asking for a comparison between a diode laser and the CO2 laser. Now I can't give you much information on, as to all the possibilities of a diode laser. What I can tell you is that uh, some diode lasers can cut wood, uh, some diode lasers can cut acrylic, but they're usually limited to cutting thin and soft materials or woods, mm -hmm. uh, better suited for papers or thin sheets of really thin sheets of acrylic. Um, I'm not saying that they don't have more powerful units, but it's just kind of a mixed bag in my experience of what you're getting with the diode use laser. What I can tell you is that by when you're making the um, commitment to our AP laser family of products, is that you're you're not just getting something you know is going to do the job you need it to do, but it's also going to do more than you expected it to do. We have our open cabinet system. You know, our Z table is removable. Our laser top is removable. So you can elevate, you can put, you know, you can engrave everything from a, a thimble and smaller up to a Volkswagen bug. I've seen that too, yes. I will um, say, I know kind of building off that, I know people have had questions, especially with our new lowrider models coming out, you know, what is, you know, how does that help me? What's the point of that? You know, why, why would I get that over, you know, a, any other boxed in laser and really what, one of the big things that I know a lot of people are getting use out of, you know, besides like furniture and things like that, or is the monument industry is huge because yeah, yes. you can just move your laser down to meet the material without having to crank your heavy or, thing up to meet the machine. Or some carts aren't crankable. Some things you're not, you don't have the ability of putting on an actual cart. So you right. might have to roll that low road rider over top of something, lower the top all the way down, and it really expands your... Uh, your the limitless possibilities of actually getting Absolutely. to every material you need to get to or want to get to and really allows you to what I say think outside the box you know lasers are too powerful to keep inside of a box I will I say I've heard that from Tom we so. finally have one of those models in here too so yes, I, within the next couple of weeks I know uh, two weeks out from now I've got some chairs I want to do and I might do that live for you so I'm excited for that <laughs> <laughs> um, then I saw another one here, and this one is more of an informational thing. Maybe I should have talked about this in the tech corner. But the Laser Twins say they just saw this somewhere else, and they had to share it because they had no idea, and it's so helpful. And they say you can do math in Lightburn's dimension boxes, and you can type in different units, and it'll convert automatically. For example, I have my unit set to inches currently. And if she, if the design is an inch and a half wide and it wanted to add eight millimeters, she can type in 1.5 plus eight millimeters and it comes out to 1.815. And so there's a couple different ways you can do that. One is huh. with the boxes. Um, sorry, I have to get over to my right screen here. Sorry, let me find where I was here. Well, first, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you first on the grid. First off, I want to point out the grid on this is scalable. Mm -hmm. So when I say the grid, the squares that are within this, if I have them set to a half inch, so each grid, each square is a half inch. So you see there's 10 and 11, there's a half inch in between. So if I want to do a square, I can, I can me measure things off to this grid. I can have a lined. I can say, well, I want to do it right here. I can use the squares as a reference point. And what the laser twins were talking about is, I have to find it here. Well, I lost it. I'll have to find it again and bring it up in the next, uh, I, I, I will do it again and I'll bring it up in the next uh, next week. I'll talk about this some more. Uh, but I want to go ahead and move on to our next question. Um, and Charles Anthony Harris was wondering if anyone knows who to contact about the AP laser buyback program. Oh, that's and a good one. And what I am assuming he is referencing is we do have our trade-in and trade-up program. 
okay? You heard me talk earlier. We have some, uh, we have some AP Laser customers that have had an AP Laser for 10 years, 13 years, three, three minutes, three hours, because mm -hmm. uh, somebody's unboxing their machine today. Congratulations um, on unboxing. And uh, if you remember, if you need any help while you're going along that process, please reach out to our AP Laser technical support team. But we do have a trade-in, trade-up program, which will let you take any AP Laser, contact an AP Laser, your AP Laser sales rep or an AP Laser sales representative, and, and let them know you're interested in doing a trade-in, trade-up. And what will happen is we will open a line of communication where we'll do a remote valuation of the machine you have. So we'll ask for pictures and descriptions, and we'll get some details out of your machine. And then our uh, AP Laser um, sales leadership team will do an evaluation, and then we'll, make, we'll give you an offer uh, to take back your machine as a credit towards a newer or larger machine. Wow. Uh, I've had some people take a 2816, and, 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 an older 2816, and uh, say they, they only need the, a newer, they only want a newer 1812, and there was, you know, so we gave them a little bit of m money for the 2816 because they use it quite a bit, mm -hmm. and then we applied that towards the purchase of their 1812. I think they had a couple other things with it, which, um, but anyways, we're gonna let you stay in the AP Laser family and not just have to add, we can we can let you replace. Of course, many of our users are finding that they want to add to their uh, AP Laser fam to products. Uh, I have some customers that have uh, 14 machines. I have some customers that have one machine. Or we have some customers, say I. But uh, most importantly is if you are realizing now that you, when you got involved, you could afford the 1812 or the 2816 or 2616, and now you're really interested in going to the next level, give us a call. We can work, we can usually work something out to give you credit towards your upgrade to a 4024 or 4836. Um, because that's really where most people want to be is that 4836, if you have the need for it, of course. Right, and, right. Um, so that was an excellent question. Um, so we don't call it a buyback program, we call it the trade in, trade up program. And it's really, you know, it's a great feature for all of our AP Laser customers because mm -hmm. we want to keep you happy uh, with everything you're doing. Do you sell that material in your shop? Yes, uh, we do. Sorry, I just saw that on, from Good Rubber LLC. Yes, we do share. Uh, we do sell the mirrored acrylic in our shop. If you, the links are in the description of the video. Mm -hmm. um, there's an aplaser.com slash shop on the, on the screen there. But the links to the products are available in the that we use today are available in the description of the video, along with the many other links. And of course, there is a promotion code going right now that's on the screen and also in the chat if you look back, that will give you a, I believe it's a 10% discount on the mirrored acrylic. Uh, keep uh, keep your again, keep checking the web store frequently because we're adding stuff on a weekly basis right now mm -hmm. and replenishing stuff and you're gonna have really becoming your one-stop shop. Uh, there's also going to be some el scenes and elements available on our web store for uh, a lot of times those are monument driven, um, but there's some things that are very adaptable. And uh, the images we have available today are uh, that um, Alicia worked on should also be available in our AP Laser University. Uh, yep. All of our uh, AP Laser family members are get exclusive access to our AP Laser University and where we have uh, instructional videos on uh, that we're constantly adding to, but we have covering all the training stuff you need, mm -hmm. um, refresher stuff, material stuff. We're adding to it constantly. There's already a, a large amount of material there. It's a great tool to help you on your AP Laser journey. I will say just real quick too, the website for the APLU's website is getting reworked a little bit. So right now there is a tab that says workshops you'll find all of the files and everything under support, under okay. the support tab, not the workshop tab. So it's a little okay. kind of crazy to get to, but you'll find them. And if you ever need help, you know, feel free. Yes. We have an email as well that we can reach out to, right? Yes, yeah, so you can also reach out to AP Laser Live at aplaser.com. But even if you're just navigating the AP Laser University, our tech support team, our 24 seven tech support team, we should view them more as customer support because they're there Absolutely. to support you. Don't get frustrated trying to find something to say, hey, can you show me where this is in the university? Our, our 
uh, tech support team will be more than happy to assist you and take a few minutes to find what you're looking for, the link in the, the, and on the uh, AP Lazy University. Mm -hmm. um, I think with that, we got our engraving done. I, I know I pulled up an image of it from earlier that looks a little bit nicer than yes, it we, would in the machine can we go there. Can show but... that finished product again? <laughs> yeah, so you can see how nice that looks. And again, that's just got a nice coat of white paint on the back of it. I put it in that frame. And you have a really nice mirror so, that, you know, is going to look lovely at a wedding. Full disclosure, full disclosure, I am a, I am also a, a DJ, an mm -hmm. entertainment DJ, as in I, I DJ weddings and open houses and, and bar mitzvahs and, and parties and different venues and stuff like that. Uh, but I do a lot of weddings and I, did, I just need to ask you a couple questions real quick. Uh, I can't remember how much that acrylic is not very expensive on our web store. But do you recall about how much that frame cost? I think it was around twenty or thirty dollars. It wasn't much at all, and for what it is, and it's eleven so, by fourteen, so it's quite large. You so know? for a for that whole project with the laser time and stuff, we might be looking at maybe forty to forty five dollars worth of material. That type of thing for weddings will easily sell for a couple hundred dollars, if not more. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I can say that with confidence. And anyone else out there doing wedding type materials, I'm pretty sure can attest to the same thing. And again, uh, if you're uh, next week, we're going to be taking a break um, as we're at Motorhead Garage, which is exciting. Um, but when we come back, we're going to be doing focusing on wedding materials. Right. So yes, yeah, so, you know, I forgot. Next week we're going to be on location for Motorhead Garage. It won't be doing our YouTube live because we'll be a little bit busy. Mm -hmm. um, Real quick, Ron Baker asked. Uh, Ron Baker asked, "What if you do a backlit? Would you paint it white, white still?" I, if if you want to put the lights behind it, don't don't paint it. Just let the light shine through. I might not invert it if you're going to do it that way. But again, run your test, see what you like and what looks better with those lights behind there. But yeah, don't add the paint if you want the color to shine through from those lights. It doesn't really kind of get through at all with that. So. That's a good question. Kevin White said, on the next class on wedding stuff, I need to make clear acrylic wedding invitations. If you could do that, that would be great. Absolutely. We, we can definitely get around to, to doing that, Kevin. But what I can tell you is that everything that Alicia did today can apply with mm -hmm. your clear acrylic. You just don't mirror it. Exactly. Exactly. So um, you take the mirror part out of the acrylic. You take the mirror part out of the software. So right, right. unless you're doing it to be with the intention of it still shining from the back, which I still recommend in many cases. So, mm -hmm. but everything applies the same to the, uh, to the clear acrylic for the invitations, but that we would definitely look at doing some, some wedding invitations along with some other things. That's a it's great gonna idea. It's going to be a good one yes. for sure. So, and with that, I think we are just about wrapped up. I thank you all for joining us today. Look forward to seeing you all in two weeks. And again, keep an eye out for, you know, if you want to watch this, go ahead back and rewatch it later. Mm -hmm. Rewatch it, pause it, uh, especially in the beginning where uh, Alicia was really. Uh, I know, I fly through it. Her, I, her, I go quick. It, <laughs> she's amazing. She's, uh, she's very good at what she does. She's got a brilliant mind. And I look forward to seeing you all in just a couple weeks. And uh, thank you for joining us. Bye. <laughs>